it's a big pleasure for me to have a talk here. So, uh, how many of you already heard about React OS? Raise your hands. Oh, that's quite a few. <laughs> okay, so in this talk, uh, this talk will be actually pretty uh, not not so much technical, but I will dive into a few technical details. So it, it's not going to be just uh, what React OS is, but we will start from this. So. The talk will be introduction. Then we will see actual uh, React OS system design, how it is done. Uh, then we will discuss React OS kernel itself. Then the bootloader, which is uh, I was working on actively in the recent time. And uh, then we will do a short summary. And uh, the talk will be finished with a live demonstration of React OS and uh, my bootloader now. So let's start. What actually is React OS? It started about uh, 10 years ago as an attempt to, uh, to do the same thing which Linux Torvalds did with Unix. Because in the 70s the dominant operating system was Unix. And he decided to provide a free implementation of the Unix system and called it Linux. We do something similar because uh, we are providing an operating system which is uh, compatible with Windows NT operating system. React OS is written completely from scratch. It does not use any... Uh, it is not based on Linux kernel as most people think. So, and uh, React OS is actually a full operating system replacement, 100% compatible with Windows. So it is not just only the kernel, it's its whole operating system. Our code is licensed under GPL license, as we think it's quite good. And uh, now we have about 20 active developers who work on this project. And of course, React OS is freely available to everyone, it's not uh, actually any commercial based company supporting it or something. It's, it's completely a free initiative. So let's see about the uh, React OS design. As you see, it's a uh, classic design of uh, Windows NT kernel. React OS aims and actually uh, goes to completely uh, mimic the Windows NT kernel, internal architecture, uh, public interfaces, the driver stack, and uh, application stack, so that uh, our system is completely compatible. As you see, uh, <coughs> uh, this is usual thing with for uh, Windows NT kernel, and it's not uh, related to Linux in any way, the architecture. Let's see what the kernel consists of. Actually, the kernel uh, consists of a few files. It's uh, kernel itself, it's hardware abstraction layer, it's uh, device drivers. Also, we have to provide uh, some components to the system which uh, are needed for it. So this is Win32 subsystem, which provides uh, application program interface for Windows uh, applications, actually. Then we provide a networking drivers, mm -hmm. complete networking stack, because uh, it's not possible to, to go without it. We provide GDI, user interface, we provide DirectX and OpenGL libraries for graphics support. Of course, we use uh, where it's possible, we use open source projects. For example, in networking, we use a complete TCP IP stack implementation from a library OS Kit TCP. In uh, OpenGL, we use Mesa, of course. And in DirectX, we share some work with Vine project. So let's see, what is a hardware abstraction library? It is done as a uh, DLL file, which is referenced by the kernel itself. 
NTOS kernel is there. And uh, technically, we try uh, to, to make it so that exported APIs correspond to the ones of Windows 2003, Service Pack 1 Windows. But uh, this is not exact copy, so this, uh, there are a couple of Recto specific functions. And uh, hardware abstraction layer and kernel interfaces are not compatible with Windows and T family. As of now, we have uh, UP and MP versions, but uh, right now the most actively worked on are on a single processor based version of hardware abstraction library. As a proof of concept, we made also an Xbox version of hardware abstraction layer which uh, provides Reactos a unique ability to work on Xbox game console. Because even Microsoft did not plan to make Windows working on Xbox, but Reactos already works. So, what is uh, MTOS kernel exactly? It's actually the, what, what is called the kernel itself. Physically, it is done as a portable executable, which reference a few other DLLs, like hardware abstraction layer, debugger interfaces, and uh, boot video support, and some others. Our kernel is developed completely from scratch. As I already said, it's not based on Linux or any kernel code. And uh, bootloader does uh, actually all the work on loading kernel, its DLLs, setting up hardware trees, and stuff like that. So let's see. Architecture of the kernel. Uh, as of now, we uh, make our goal to, to make the kernel compatible to Windows 2003. It's the most uh, up-to-date and, as we think, the, most, uh, the best kernel out there of Windows NT family. So it, it works aiming it. So uh, exported APIs correspond to this uh, version of kernel and all internal structures which are more or less uh, referenced by device drivers or by uh, debuggers are also correspond to this kernel. About, uh, there are some questions about methods of development of our kernel and uh, certainly we base our work mostly on only uh, legally available sources of documentation, like books uh, uh, and uh, some other internet resources, like OpenRCE, where they provide code chains and things like that. So uh, the kernel itself consists of a few modules. Uh, they are usually referenced by two or three letters, and they provide all this uh, architecture which is behind this the kernel. So we will see what they are. First of all, there are cache controller, which manages uh, cache, prefetching, and all operations related to file system support. This is currently not implemented in ReactOS. CM, this is configuration manager. Simply speaking, it's uh, support for registry. It's in the kernel. This is high-level routing to manipulate with registry. ReactOS have a uh, quite simplified implementation, which is not optimized for speed or for size, but just does it, its work. Then there are debugger interfaces, file system support, executive systems, and uh, boot video support. Also, there are quite a few more subsystems. I will not <laughs> make an accent of them. I think the most important here are memory manager, again implemented differently than uh, Windows NT version, and the object manager, which is uh, like a base of all kernel. It's implemented compatibly with Windows. 
So and uh, we have, of course, we have runtime library, which is shared between kernel, bootloader, and a few other libraries, and some other minor <coughs> modules which are not implemented in React OS. So what we have about kernel compatibility? Bootloader. Currently, in the tree, it is unable to actually load Windows by using our bootloader. So it is considered as incompatible. But uh, some work has been done to make it more compatible and to actually try to load Windows 84. Hardware abstraction layer, as I already said, it's, it's really not compatible with Windows, but architecturally it's almost the same thing. And for the kernel, you can see, we have a few models which are almost always, almost uh, maximally done, it's uh, 90 percent compatibility, which is quite good. But uh, we lack compatibility in uh, memory manager, in configuration manager, and uh, for example, as you see, cache controller is not compatible at all, which means we cannot support any IFS <coughs> installable file system drivers right now. So that's it for the kernel. Let's see bootloader. What actually does it do, this bootloader thing, and why I would want to make such an accent on it? Actually, it's, uh, it should be quite simple. It's uh, prepare environment for the kernel, and load the kernel and pass control to it. It should be quite simple. And, for example, we take an example as Lilo. It's known that it has four stages. It actually loads the kernel and passes control to it. Nothing actually too complex. But in case with React OS, and uh, of course with Windows NT, it's not that simple. And since <coughs> we want to implement it uh, compatibly, we want to, to make it uh, do it the same way as Windows do. But we don't have any documentation. This, this process is quite poorly documented, even in Windows internals or any other serious books. Uh, so, freeloader is the actual bootloader which loads React OS kernel. Uh, its main features are that uh, it has a completely unique design. Again, it's not similar to Grub, it's not similar to Microsoft's NT loader, and of course it's not similar to Lilo. But it has a portable architecture which makes it possible to make uh, freeloader working on usual PC, x86 architecture, on Xbox, on Power PC, and we plan to support other platforms too. But uh, the aim is, as always, to provide the same environment to the operating system kernel, which uh, the same environment which until loader provides, so that we will be compatible. But we use a different technology here. Let's see, so what's that uh, complex in this loader? Because uh, it should be quite simple. We load the kernel. Uh, first, we, we have to load the kernel from the disk, switch to protected mode, and pass control to it. So that should be simple. However, we, we have a problem. We have a problem about file system support. Uh, kernel consists of a few files. It's not uh, just one file as in Linux. It's uh, a few portable exec executables linked together. We have to provide a memory manager implementation. We have to do a hardware detection in the bootloader. And finally, we have to <coughs> support a, to provide the same memory model as Windows loader does. And also uh, do some missed operations like uh, loading registry and national language support. So let's see what the boot process consists of. <coughs> First of all, we will uh, the free loader actually into the memory and initialize its memory manager. Then we load settings from an file and show a menu to use it. 
this, this thing looks like a typical loader does. Then, when user selects to boot some operating system and the kernel is set to Windows, because Freeloader allows to boot Linux and uh, other operating systems, we have to distinguish this. So, this is load and boot windows. This is actually the main function which provides a booting process. So, the steps. First, it is an opening file system where kernel resides. It gets parameters, any if user pass. It allocates the loader parameter block structure, which is passed to the kernel and has uh, all, all needed lists, uh, hardware detection results, memory management, mapping, and everything there. Then we perform hardware detection. Then we load NTOS kernel at the hardware abstraction layer. <coughs> Scan import descriptor tables to load any reference at DLLs. Uh, compile a boot time drivers list and to load them. Then we load uh, boot drivers. Initialize loader parameter block structure. And do this uh, memory management thing, which is the most complex in this boot loader. Because uh, the actual kernel is quite picky about the structure of memory. Oh, see this. So this is about the memory, because Windows NT kernel memory manager is very sensitive to the memory map which is given to it by the bootloader. So by a number of uh, experiments, I compiled uh, some requirements which Windows would need. So, it wants a memory descriptor list, which uh, maps the whole memory. <coughs> then it needs a page directory entry and page table entries, which describe the, uh, all stuff located during the boot process and the memory, actually. Then we need a special hardware abstraction layer, page table entry, for special mapping like PCR and TSS. And we need to switch CPU to protected mode and page mode, of course. So, but uh, we have to obey to some rules because only the first 16 megabytes can be allocated and mapped to PDE. If we map more or less, kernel will not boot. Then memory descriptor list must cover all available memory in the system. So it, it, it's not related to the actual mapping. And uh, the last... Uh, rule is that the quantity of memory descriptors in the list must not be over 30. Otherwise, kernel bug checks. I don't know why Microsoft put this uh, limitation, but maybe it was due to historical reasons, I don't know. So, uh, lower 2 gigabytes of virtual address space are identity and contagious mapped as uh, physical memory, yeah, as user space. And higher 2 gigabytes are called as uh, kernel space and uh, mapped only actually what is really allocated there. So uh, we have user space is contagious and kernel space has some holes. As the last thing, we have to uh, properly fill selectors. So starting with GDT and IDT tables, then we have to uh, set CSDS and TSS to proper values, then we have to load TSR, clear GS and point FS to PCR. And only once we have done all this, we can actually uh, boot the kernel and it should work. So back to reactors. This is how it looks like back into reality. As you see, it looks like uh, actual real Windows replacement. We even uh, made an Explorer replacement, which has 
quite similar interface. You see this start menu. We have ABI word installed. We have a MIRP installed, which is just downloaded from the internet and set up there. <coughs> Firefox, of course, works. All this. So let's summarize a bit. Uh, <coughs> what, uh, <laughs> taking a bit back step, Reactors is a hundred percent Windows replacement. It doesn't need any uh, other special applications or drivers or something like this, like Linux needs, because Linux is only the kernel, but Reactors is operating system. As for architecture. We aim to be completely compatible with Windows NT architecture. We do not uh, want to implement something better if, it, if it's not implemented the same already. So we have to do firstly reference implementation and then we can think about implementing things better. But of course the end result would be that uh, we implement something better because, for example, right now <coughs> Overall speed of React OS is not that uh, fast, but uh, in some tests we made some optimization and we outperform Windows. But that's a pretty uh, small area right now. So what is uh, React OS current status and its current roadmap? React OS currently, uh, even despite it's already 10 years in development, but it's still in alpha stage. It's due to a number of reasons, but uh, early years was uh, very complex because we had to do many things from ground up and uh, actual people, non-developers non could not notice our progress because uh, it was so, so much amount of work to do before we even get the simple common prompt on the screen. As soon as we could load uh, some simple console application, things became uh, going a lot faster because uh, we have got some publicity and uh, <coughs> new developers joined. Then uh, another milestone was when we switched to graphical user interface. Then we uh, really got a lot more developers and uh, development again start to, to be increasing the speed. So now we, are, uh, we released release uh, 0.3, which is quite low on version, but uh, our releases are not that stable, but they are more like proof of concept. So I'm going to demonstrate actually what reactors can do now. And then we will have some Q&A section. So. That's React OS booting. I already installed it, so it's pre-installed right now. Yeah, it found a VGA display controller of QM, but I'm not going to install drivers for it right now. So we have command interpreter. We can now start task manager. Yeah, it looks pretty much similar to Windows One. <laughs> so we have quite a few processes here. Only one application. But this is. Uh, 
application uh, which is React OS compiled. I will show you an application downloaded from uh, from internet. Let's see, for example. This is Mirk, my favorite IRC client. It's uh, exactly without any modifications and of course since it's a closed source it cannot be ported to any architecture. But we are able to run it like on Windows. Some slowness. Yeah, that's it. It's not registered, yeah, sorry. <laughs> ah, I even ran two copies of it. Yeah, a bit slow because it's QM, <laughs> it's not real hardware. So in the, in the meanwhile, it works. Let's do a Q&A section. I would be glad to answer any questions. Speaking about legal problems, yeah? Uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty much uh, sensitive topic because uh, even uh, if we want to do this uh, as close to Windows as possible, there are laws and there are patents which we have to avoid. So uh, we uh, analyze this situation very thoroughly and uh, we, we uh, copy only things which cannot be copyrighted or cannot be patented. All patented uh, implementations, we have to avoid this because it's, uh, that's it. But as for uh, architecture, as for design, as for public APIs, as for uh, some function names, all this cannot be copyrighted and uh, of course we use it. Yeah. Um, at this early stage in development, how can we help to uh, perfect the operating system? Because I assume it's not ready for testing applications yet. I didn't really uh, understand. What, uh, what, what, what do you say? At this early stage in development, yeah? it's probably not ready for application testing yet. So how can we as developers help? Ah, yeah. yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, what we always say, because uh, when people see these uh, releases, they uh, start to think that uh, we already provide a system which is usable for everyday use and uh, can actually be used. But uh, that's more uh, even a proof of concept because it's not, uh, it's not stable, it's not uh, feature complete, uh, it may easily crash and uh, as of now I'm demonstrating it only in QM because uh, I do not want to install it on this laptop on real hardware because uh, it's not uh, 
production stage yet. But uh, as a developer, uh, we have a, a quite a good advantage because every developer can help by developing some uh, components and testing them on uh, our target windows. For example, <coughs> uh, this uh, some control panel applets, yes, it will. Yes. It's empty, but it shouldn't be. Anyway, as some uh, control panel applets were developed right on Windows. And then just uh, when reactor started supporting some uh, necessary shell 32 functions and comctl 32 we just move this application into reactor S3 and it works. The same can be said about uh, device drivers. They can be developed on Windows and then just uh, integrated into reactor S without any modifications. The only components which are quite uh, tied together are kernel, hardware abstraction layer, and Win32 subsystem. So these are core components which should be developed only inside reactors. Everything else can be developed outside and just imported. Yeah, so any more questions? Yes? Um, do you think that Reactos is going to be in the position that Linux is in now, where it's actually in use in the corporate world, and if so, when? Yeah, uh, I think uh, Reactors is going to actually, uh, we have a quite a uh, wide niche in the market for the uh, operating system of this kind because uh, there are a, a vast majority of Win32 applications and uh, right now only Windows and Linux plus Wine can run them, but there are no free and open source operating system which would support uh, Win32 API. The same can be said about native API of uh, Windows again as for device driver support. Because as we know, unfortunately, not all hardware vendors provide drivers for Linux. So it can be a problem. Reactors avoids this problem too. Is the current user base equal to the number of developers, or are there any other, well, other people using, using it just uh, hmm? operating system of choice? Yeah. So, are there people using it as well as the developers? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Actually, we have quite a few uh, people interested in it, but uh, of course we cannot say right now about users of operating system because this operating system cannot be used right now. So it's mainly, uh, we call these people as uh, testers because they mainly test our results. But uh, our developers and testers number <laughs> differ a lot. We have only, as I said, only 20 active developers but uh, as the number of uh, people interested in reactors, uh, I can say we, we have about uh, 5,000 unique visitors on our website every day, so people are interested. <laughs> yes? Have you implemented the blue screen of death and how? <laughs> hmm? Sorry? So, have you implemented the blue screen of death? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> huh. When I wanted to, <laughs> to bug check, it does not want to work.
So, and I will demonstrate one more thing, which should be interesting. Yeah, no blue screen. <laughs> it doesn't want to show. <laughs> okay, so uh, in my talk I mentioned uh, a work on bootloader, which is uh, should be compatible with Windows and should be a loading Windows. I will demonstrate one thing which I never showed yet. This is anti-loader. I boot our free loader with it. And then I boot Windows anti-kernel by using free loader. Yeah, we see it's Windows anti-4. Quite slow, but no way. Yeah, and we have Windows NT server booted. That's it. There are no currently no bootloader which is able to directly boot Windows NT kernel. I think this work could be used in uh, Linux BIOS project, for example, to directly booting uh, not only Linux but Windows too from BIOS and uh, maybe some other appliances. Um, before you were talking about uh, crossover office, um, there's also Wine which, uh, do, which does the same thing and it's also open source. So what's the difference between using Linux and Wine and using React OS? Uh, yes, we uh, we share a lot of code with Wine, but uh, why uh, the Linux plus Wine solution would not work in uh, in long term? Wine is a compatibility layer. It it will never be a complete replacement for operating system. But uh, ReactOS aims to be a complete replacement. So we we would not have this uh, slowness in emulating, we would not need a, we have a completely written from scratch kernel and uh, completely written from scratch uh, Win32 subsystem. So all this uh, in the long run should get us faster speed and uh, maximum possible compatibility, unlike Wine, which is always limited to some layer. Someone they have problem with uh, applications linking to directly to NTOS kernel like there and for some drivers too. But also, Vine, Vine plus Linux solution doesn't solve the problem of uh, device drivers, which ReactOS does. What's the status of the source code audit on uh, ReactOS? What, what's the source code of? The state is of the audit. The state? The state of huh? uh, You started the audit of the source code because you suspected some uh, uh, Microsoft uh, source code in React OS. Ah, yes. Uh, since uh, we are so, uh, so close to uh, architecturally and uh, technically we are so close to Windows NT family, that uh, <clears throat> there are some suspicions, suspicious people who think that uh, we could use illegally obtained documentation sources, including the uh, famous leaked source code. But uh, this question is answered quite simple. Even before this public Windows source code leak, reactors already worked and already worked the same way. So, uh, but uh, to be sure, because we accept uh, patches from, from anyone who says he has a real name and wants to submit a patch which works into the tree, we have to be quite, uh, 
quite suspicious about this code and we decided to perform a full audit of the code so we have uh, all real names of developers we have all documentation sources related to the developed code so we have uh, so we just we just do this for future so we should not end up in court with Microsoft suing us we better make some uh, actions right now to prevent this. Yeah, this is the last question. <laughs> okay. um, you're aiming at the 2003 uh, uh, kernel. Yeah. Uh, once you've got, you're there, uh, how difficult is it to go to other versions of, of Windows, especially the embedded versions? Yeah, uh, about different versions. <coughs> For quite some time, Reactors aimed Windows 84 kernel. And actually our device driver stack is still based on NT4 architecture. But we decided to, to make a move to 2003 Windows kernel compatibility because uh, right now it's the most advanced kernel of Windows and uh, we do not want to actually to, to make any uh, catch-up games. So, we just aim 2003 right now, and uh, I don't think we'll change this for a few coming years. Does it answer the question? Yes. Uh, actually, it should not be that uh, that hard because. Uh, we even had a few people interested in uh, so-called Reactor's embedded project, but uh, since our kernel is not uh, actually stable yet, no serious work has been done. But we, we really aim this uh, embedded market because Reactor's can be used in, uh, in some point of sales machines or uh, in some in some other, this, uh, I don't know how they are called this, machines like ATMs and something like this, which use currently, which currently license Windows, but uh, they could move to React OS, but still have their software in. So we, we really aim to this uh, embedded thing, but uh, right now we did not, we didn't make any force to it. So we just have this source code base, which can be tuned to, to real machine demands. So thank you very much. OK, thank you. So the, the next talk in here is on the Linux file.